Hello students, today we're going to speak about independent events. So when we have compound probability, we have more than one event going on at a time. So what we're going to do is multiply the probabilities of each singular event together. So in order to think of multiplying probability fractions, we're going to review the process for multiplying fractions. So what is one half times three fourths? One times three is three, two times four is eight, so that answer is three eighths. And just to review a few more practice problems with multiplying fractions, we have one eighth times four fifth. So one times four is four, eight times five in the denominator is 40. So that results in 40, I'm sorry, four over 40. And we can simplify that fraction because I can divide the 4 and the 40 by 4, and you would see that results in 1 tenth. In our last example, 2 ninths times 3 fifths. So say the probability of something was 2 out of 9, the probability of another event was 3 out of 5. We can multiply those together, and 2 times 3 is 6, and 9 times 5 is 45. So it becomes 6 over 45, and if we simplify that, I can divide the 6 and the 45 by 3, and that results in 2 fifteenths. Alright, so now that we've reviewed how to multiply fractions, which hopefully you can do that by now, we've had our number systems unit prior to this. So um, next we're going to talk about what is independent probability. When the outcome of one event does not impact the outcome of the second event, the events are called independent events. Independent probability can be determined by multiplying the probability of each event happening, which is the probability of A and B, can kind of break down that into the two individual parts, the two individual events, the probability of A, the first event, multiplied, so this is a multiplication dot, by the probability of the second event, which we're going to say is event B. So it's the two probabilities singularly multiplied together, which becomes then a new fraction known as compound probability of those independent events. All right, so let's see if we can kind of use that to answer some questions here and check our understanding. Um, so in a board game, students draw a card, replace it, and, draw, and then draw a second card. When you see the words replace it, those words right here, this replace it, means that kind of like a reset button has happened. So think of it like a reset. As if everything was put back to normal. And when you hit the reset button and everything's set back to normal, that means that the first event did not affect or impact the second event. So we know when you see that everything was replaced for the second time around, we know that these events are independent of one, of, of one another. All right, so to earn 50 points, a student must draw a heart-eyed card and then, let's highlight the words, and then an angel card. When you see and then, one event and then another, you know it's compound probability. So let's first look at the heart-eyed um, little emoji or icons here. Uh, the hearts, there's one here, the third card in, and the fifth card in has hearts. So how many are hearts? Looks like two have hearts, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards all together. So two out of eight are heart eyes. And then we are putting the cards back and drawing a second card. 
So if we drew a heart shaped card first, that's a two out of eight chance of getting a heart. Put the, the card back that we drew. Everything is reset. So it's still eight cards. And the next one is the angel card that we're looking for. The probability of getting an angel card looks like just the one on the end has the halo. So this one on the very end with the halo, one out of eight. So I take two eighths times one eighth. That's two sixty fourths, and that simplifies to one over thirty two. All right, the next one to earn twenty points. A student must draw a sleeping card and then an angry card. So the sleeping card looks like there's two of those out of the eight. So that's two eighths. And then an angry card. Mm, I see two angry cards in that pile. Two out of eight. So two eighths were sleeping cards and two eighths were angry cards. So two eighths times two eighths is four. 64th, and that simplifies to 1 over 16. To earn 15 points, a student must draw an angry card or a laughing card, and then an angel. So notice how I circle the word or. When you see or in a probability, that means you're kind of combining things together. So angry or laughing. Let's look at the angry ones. There was two of them. And then a laughing card looks like there's one of them. So altogether, angry or laughing was three of the eight cards. And then, it's, and then it says you're drawing an angel card. What if we reset everything back to normal, still have our eight cards? How many are angels? It was just one of those eight. So three-eighths times one-eighth is three-sixty-fourths. And then our last one mentions to earn five points, a student must draw a sleeping card or heart eye card. And then an angry card. Well, we know the angry card, we had that before. Wasn't that two out of eight? And then the sleeping, remember the sleeping, there was two of eight. And the heart eyes, I think were also two of those eight. So I think sleeping or heart eye was four out of the eight. So half the cards were sleeping or hearts, and then two of the eight cards were angry. So we take four eighths times two eighths, or one half times one fourth. And it simplifies down to one eighth. Okay. So that's an example of every time you're drawing a card and replacing that card, you're still, notice the denominator was always the 8, because we still, every time we, we redraw something, we have 8 cards um, to begin with. So our denominator is 8. That did not change. All right, so you're supposed to play tic-tac-toe with a neighbor on this and take turns answering questions and trying to earn an X or an O if you're correct. And your other partner's supposed to check to make sure you're doing it right to kind of know whether you've earned the points um, or earned the spot with your X or O. So Kylie had a coin and a number cube. She flips the coin once and rolls a number cube once. That is, this is compound probability. And the coin has no effect on um, the rolling of the number cube. Okay, They're independent events. So I'm going to flip a coin, roll a number cube. What's the probability that the coin lands tails up and, notice I highlighted and, so another probability that the cube lands on a four. These are independent probabilities. I have to ask myself, self, what's the probability of tails multiplied by the probability of a four? Well, the probability of tails is one out of the two sides of the coin. I'm going to multiply one half times how many faces on a number cube have a four? If it's just like a, a dice, or singularly we say die, if you have one die, 
that is, um, it has a one, a four on one of the faces out of the six. So I should be taking one half times one six, which is one twelve. All right, there are six marbles in a bag. Three are green and three are yellow. If you draw a marble, replace it, so kind of like that reset button, right? And then draw another, that's independent events. Because the first thing I did didn't affect the second thing because I put the marble back into the bag before I made a second draw. So if you did that, then what's the probability of choosing two yellow marbles? So we basically want the probability of choosing yellow multiplied by the probability of choosing yellow a second time. So probability of yellow times probability of yellow. So uh, one half the marbles yellow, I think three out of the six, right? So basically three out of six is going to be multiplied by three out of six. And that's one half times one half. It will simplify to one fourth. We could say it's nine out of thirty six. It simplifies to one fourth. All right. I'm gonna um, talk through one more of these with you, and then you're gonna be pausing the video in a little bit to try some of these on your own. One card from a deck of cards is selected. It is replaced, and another card is chosen. So when it says it's been replaced, that means everything's reset, and you'll have the same denominator in your probability fractions for each event. What is the probability that the first card is a red card and the second card is a diamond? Now, you do need to know about um, sets of playing cards. Um, in a set of playing cards, um, there's 52 cards if you don't include the jokers. So when they, they're talking about a regular deck of cards, it's basically your 52 cards. Um, in, within each deck of 52 cards, there's um, a set of cards called diamonds, a set of cards called hearts, and all of those are red cards. Then you've got a set of cards called spades and a set of cards called uh, clubs. And those are black cards. So basically half the deck is red, half the deck is black cards. All right, which means 26 cards are red, 26 cards are black. And then since there's the four different types of cards, it's kind of like a fourth of the cards are diamonds, a fourth of the cards are hearts, a fourth of the cards are spades, and a fourth of the cards are clubs. And then within each of those categories, like diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades, just you might want to know that there's 13 of each of those categories, 13 cards within there, because it goes anywhere from a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, jack, queen, king. Okay, so 13 cards that are diamonds that have those different um, numbers or letters on there. All right, so what's the probability the first card is a red and the second is diamond? We said half the cards are red. All of the hearts, all of the diamonds, 13 and 13 are 26 out of the 52. So the probability of red is one thing that we want to know, and that's half the cards. What do we want to do when it says and? We want to multiply the probabilities. So I got my little multiplication dot, and the second is a diamond. So we want the probability of getting a diamond now. So a diamond um, is a fourth of the deck of cards, okay? Because there was diamonds and hearts and spades and clubs, four different categories. So a fourth of the cards are diamonds. So one half times one fourth is one eighth. All right. What I'd like for you guys to do next is maybe pause the video, if you could, and try and answer the rest of the tic-tac-toe problems, and then come on back, um, start the video up again, and see how you did. All right, and give it a pause. Well, welcome back. 
So this one here, what is the probability of flipping three heads in a row? I would say you could write it down probability of heads times probability of heads times probability of heads. And if it's a regular two-phase coin, you're going to have half chance for each of those. Multiplied together becomes one-eighth. Okay, the one with the, the picture here with the bones and the collars and the two balls. It looks like there's six items all together. What's the probability he'll get a bone and then a collar? So how many out of those six are bones? Looks like half of them. Three out of the six items there. So half are bones, and you're going to multiply that one half times one six because one of the items is a collar out of those six. So one half times one six is one twelfth. All right, in this next example for Dexter with the four different coins, I'm just assuming there's a penny, nickel, dime, and quarter there. So four different kinds of coins. Um, if we want to get probability of dime times probability of dime because both the coins uh, that you want to pick are dimes, it's one fourth of a chance times one fourth of a chance, and that should equal one sixteenth. All right, our last three problems on this set with the letters of the alphabet. Hopefully, you know there's 26 letters in the alphabet. What's the probability of drawing a vowel? replacing it and drawing another, another vowel. And the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. So that's um, probability of vowel times the probability of a vowel. So it's 5 out of 26 are vowels times 5 out of 26 for vowels because we want to do it twice. Okay, drawing twice from that set. All right, and that, believe it or not, is 25 in the numerator, and then I'm, my, here's my fraction bar. doesn't kind of look like it, but it's a fraction slash. Um, 676, so 25 over 676. All right, next, the probability the first number cube shows a 2 or a 3, and the other number cube shows an even number. So in this case, we've got two dice, or a set of dice, right? Two so the first one has a 2 or a 3. The second cube, number cube has evens. So 2 and a 3 is 2 out of the 6 faces of, or you know, sides, I guess, of the cube. And the probability of evens, that's 3 out of 6, or 1 half of them. So 2, 6 times 3, 6. I got 6 over 36, which is 1 6. And the last one here, I'm not sure how your copy came out. Hopefully you were able to see the second candle and the fifth candle had polka dots. So we're looking for polka dot candles both times. So just put probability dot times probability of dot, short for polka dot. Um, so that is two out of the five, two fifths. If I wanted to replace it and start over again, re reset everything, 2 out of 5 the second time. So 2 fifths times 2 fifths is 4 twenty fifths. So how'd you do? Hopefully you understand compound probability of independent events when everything is set back to normal for the second thing that's done. Okay, and compound probability could be two or more events. You could do a third event in any one of these. I think maybe there was only one example of two or of more than two events with the, um, ooh, what was that example with the, the three things? Was it flipping a coin three times? Yeah, it was um, that second row, the first problem with the probability of heads, heads, and heads. Okay, but otherwise it's more than one event is called prob um, compound probability. And stay tuned for our next lesson when we talk about probabilities of dependent events. Hope to see you then. Bye.